What's going on growers? James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, I wanna to share with you how to plant and grow asparagus that you will be eating for the next 20 years. Let's go. Before we get to planting the asparagus, I want to take you over to a patch that I planted about five years ago and we've been harvesting. Asparagus are perennials, which means that they'll come back year after year without you planting them. And one of the great things about asparagus is that they're one of the earliest perennials or even veggies to be ready to eat in the spring, which is awesome because the asparagus are packed with vitamins and that's exactly what we need in the early spring after that long winter. So asparagus are one of my fresh favorite things to eat fresh. When it's from the garden, it's completely different from the stuff from the store. When you get the asparagus from the garden like this one, we can cut it down you know, just uh, about at soil level, maybe a little lower. And then you can eat these things fresh, just like this, without even cooking them. They're packed with water and packed with nutrition. Uh, an incredible flavor. I like to snap them just like this. And see that? Not stringy like the ones in the store. And I'm telling you, these things are sweet like candy. And we just take a bite right into it. <laughs> so sweet, so good. No reason to cook it completely different than the stuff you get at the store. But let's go over there and start getting some of these planted and into the ground so we can eat them more in the future. Tuck loves eating these things too. Asparagus are one of his favorites to come out and snack on. They're kind of like peas uh, around here. It's tough for them to actually get into the house and even cook them because we're always snacking, them, snacking on them when they're fresh out right here. Now, let's get to planting out our asparagus. And asparagus will grow well in zones three to zones eight. When it comes to growing your asparagus, you wanna make sure you pick a good location because this is the spot it's going to be for the next 20 years. So you wanna make sure you get it in a spot that it will perform well. It likes the full sun. It can tolerate some partial shade, like where I showed you in the section where I'm growing mine. Get some partial shade there. But full sun, the ferns and the roots will grow more vigorously and they'll have less chance of disease. It's also a good idea if you wanna stick the asparagus on like the so outside of your garden essentially. Because if you put it on a spot that it's the outside, it's gonna be growing all year. So it's gonna be easy to work around and to walk around. You don't wanna put it in the middle of your garden and constantly be you know, stepping on some locations and bumping into it. That's not what you want at all. When it comes to the soil, asparagus like to grow in light soil that uh, heats up quickly in the spring. And they like soil that drains well because if you don't have soil that drain well, the asparagus roots will rot and that's the opposite of what you want. So when it comes to timing, it's best to put your asparagus in in the early spring. And the best thing to do, in my suggestion, is to order a one-year-old crown from a reputable company. And the one-year-old crown is good because it'll get you to harvest quicker if you try to plant them from seed, which you can, it's going to take a whole extra year. So if this is your first asparagus patch, I suggest you grow them from, uh, from roots, from crowns, and order them from a good company. This way you can jumpstart your bed and get some harvest pretty quick. Because this is a perennial, so we're not going to be able to get the harvest necessarily the first year. This is an investment. When it comes to the roots, you should try to get them in the ground as quickly as possible once you order or receive them. But if you can't, uh, you can do what I did here. I just put some cocoa, some wet cocoa in and then just left the roots in there just so they stay moist and don't dry out too badly on me. I have three roots here that I'm going to plant. So we're, we're going to get those in. You can even soak them right before you plant them to help uh, get some of that moisture in. But we're gonna plant them in the bed in a section right here. I'm gonna show you uh, the best technique, what I believe to plant them. And we've got three crowns and they all need to be spaced about a foot and a half to two feet apart. So we need about four feet. So what I'm gonna do in this section, we've got five feet here to here. I'm just gonna section that out. And then we're gonna dig a, a, a ditch, essentially 12, 12 inches wide and about six to eight inches deep. And we're gonna do about five feet because that's, a, that's gonna be the spacing for the three crowns of asparagus that we have. So I'm gonna get this, uh, section dug out and then I'll show you what the next step is. And I'll explain more as I progress why I'm doing this. And I also have some soil that I made right in front here. And we're gonna be backfilling a lot of this stuff in as time goes on. So I'll mix some of it with this soil that I made so we can get some good organic matter mixed in and overall just help the nutrition in the plants. We're gonna keep digging this out. And uh, again, the most ideal time to do this would be the early spring, but I was just in there eating some asparagus the other day and I said, I need to get some more asparagus in because they're so dang good. So we're just gonna plant this now and I think it'll still grow really well. So we want six to eight inches, we gotta go a little deeper still. 
there we go. Trench is all good. About It's about 80 inches deep, which is what we want, and 12 inches uh, width, which is perfect. Next, what we're gonna do is start getting these asparagus roots in. And the asparagus roots, if you've seen me plant strawberries, we're going with basically the same method. So what we wanna do is take these roots. We don't wanna just lay them flat like that. We're gonna build a little mound with some compost and some soil, like we did for the, for the strawberries like this. We're gonna get a little mound, then we're gonna take these roots and drape them over the mound like this. What this is gonna do is to help spread the roots out. You can see in all different directions like that, which is exactly what we want. And then we're gonna get about a foot or so, foot and a half, take some more compost, and we're gonna make another mound and do the same thing. So again, these mounds kind of work to you know, push the roots all in different directions. And I'm gonna make sure I water these in well. That was good like that, we got one more. Could even throw some cocoa in here. This is some nice uh, organic matter. It's inert, so it's not gonna really do anything besides help hold some moisture, but still good. One more mound here. There we go. Now we have the asparagus in. Next, what we're going to do is we're only going to be covering these roots with about two inches of soil over the top. So I got this mixture of my native soil and the compost. I know it needs to be watered and I'm gonna water it as I put it in, but we'll get about two inches of soil over top here. And the reason we're only putting two inches of soil is because first, we're gonna put two inches. Then in about two weeks, you'll see the uh, asparagus starting to pop up. We'll pile two more inches on top of that. Then two more weeks after that, we'll pile two more inches and then we'll get back level. The idea is that we don't wanna just take all eight inches of soil and throw it on top of the roots. It's gonna be a lot of, it's gonna take a lot of energy and a lot of, you know, nutri a lot of, it's gonna take a lot from the plants in order to get those new asparagus to pop out through eight inches of soil. If it only has two inches, then it can move through that and then we'll continually add those two inches every two weeks. So to start it off, we only wanna cover these with two inches. This is another reason you don't want to put the bed in the uh, in the middle of your garden because you're gonna have a ditch for a little while but in a few weeks it'll be covered up. I want to water this in pretty thoroughly. You'll notice when I was making those uh, those mounds that the soil was pretty dry so we want to make sure this is nice and saturated and when it comes to watering this for the first two years you're gonna to want to water this relatively often because we want to really build healthy roots and a big root system so that we can produce a lot of asparagus in the future. And again, we want to make sure we're planting this in a section that drains well because if there's a lot of sitting water, these asparagus roots will rot and that's the last thing that we want. Asparagus also like a soil that's pretty sweet, so we need the pH to be above six. Closer to seven, it would be more ideal. So if you have a soil pH that's really low, you can add some dolomite lime and that'll help sweeten up your soil. Looks like Tuck wants a little drink. We'll give him some water. And this guy's gonna be happy because in a few years he'll be able to eat his asparagus. There we go, our asparagus are planted. Now throughout the season, they're gonna pop up and start growing. And then when the fall comes for your asparagus, what you wanna do is allow these plants to continue to grow through the fall and as deep into the winter as they can, as long as they remain green. When they're green, they're photosynthesizing. They're taking an energy from the sun, they're converting it, and then they're putting that into their roots, that energy and growing bigger roots, which is what we want. So we don't want to cut these down too early in the fall or the midwinter when they're still green. We want them to be brown and basically dead, unless it's a female. So there's male and female asparagus. If you have a female asparagus and you see that it's starting to form the berries, the small berries on the asparagus plant, you can cut that out right away because we don't want that female focusing on producing seeds. We want it to focus on producing roots. So we can remove that if you start to see the berries. Then when fall come, winter is here and everything's died and it's all brown, we could come by, cut out all the dead asparagus like you see right here from previous years 
And then what I like to do in the early spring is after we had mulched it when everything was cut down in the winter, I like to pull back some of that mulch. This way the ground heats up quicker and it gets us some earlier asparagus. And when it comes to harvesting your asparagus, it's a perennial. It's gonna take a couple years till you can actually get some fruit. So the first two years for asparagus, you don't want to harvest any spears. Instead, you want to allow these ferns to grow tall, photosynthesize, and use all that energy into root production. Then the third year, you can start harvesting some spears over a four week period. So come out here every couple days, uh, grab some of the spears, and then after you've been doing that for four weeks, let the plant just produce leaves and let it grow. Then the fourth year, you can come out here and harvest over an eight week period and grab your asparagus, which is really nice. And then after that, you can just continue harvesting over an eight week period for the next uh, 15, 20 years, however long they actually grow, which is incredible. And when harvesting your asparagus, you, what you wanna do is come out here, grab one. See, this one's getting a little older because it's starting to separate, but it's still okay. And we either can crack it down at the base or we can cut it. So we're just gonna crack it down there at the base, just like that. We don't wanna uh, pull it out or anything because we don't wanna be damaging any of the roots. So we can just eat it just like this. And I'll tell you, there's nothing like eating these fresh asparagus. Like I mentioned, it, you can't even compare it to the stuff in the store. It's like night and day. It's like, well, a lot of other stuff. You can't compare, compare tomatoes, you can't compare asparagus. It's like Bill Mollison says, if you want to eat organic food, you got to grow it yourself. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you take the time to get out there and get some asparagus in the ground. It's one of my favorite perennials that's constantly just giving back more and more every single year, basically. And if you do do it, I promise, your future self will be thanking you for the next, like, like two decades or something. If you guys enjoyed the video though, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down below. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Before I let you go, I just wanted to thank one of the new channel members, Judith Roth. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Me and Tuck really appreciate it. And uh, we hope overall that you're enjoying the channel and having as much fun with the videos as, as, as much fun we have making them basically. So James and Tuck, we'll be back to you again real soon. We out.